So now that you've done your checks and the paperwork, turn the ignition key to on and allow the vehicle to do its checks. Whether you start your vehicle when it's minus 40 or plus 40, it's counted as a cold start. This is because the operating temperature of a diesel engine is approximately 90 degrees Celsius. And safety critical services such as brakes are always prioritised. In the dash, there are three indicators. One for the front brake circuit, one for the rear brake circuit, and one for the parking brakes. As we mentioned, every start is a cold start, but you don't need to idle to scan your engine. Idling a modern truck for more than five minutes is just old school thinking and wastes fuel. So don't leave it running while you grab a bite to eat. There's just no need. Once you've built up air pressure, put the truck into drive, release the park brake and drive away. Scan your trucks are programmed to restrict the revs to around 700 RPM before you move off to protect the clutch and drive line. As soon as the clutch is fully engaged, you get access to more revs. Now when I started driving trucks many years ago, you had to rev them hard. They had no torque, so you had to use the revs. But today, scanning your trucks generate maximum torque between 1,000 and 1,500, so you don't need to rev them hard to get them moving. They are high torque, low revving engines. If you've had experience in other trucks, you'll notice that the range may be a lot lower than what you're used to. So keep the revs between 1,000 and 1,500 RPM on the TACO, there's a green band to show you where it's making peak torque. There's no benefit revving beyond the green band. You're just turning fuel into exhaust fumes. So let the engine do the work where it's happy and save fuel. To help you drive in the most efficient way, RevCan has a colour-coded display. When you drive between 1,000 and 1,500 RPM, in all current scan your trucks, you're using peak torque and the least fuel. When you want to activate the exhaust brake, ensure the engine is revving in the blue zone. That's 2,000 to 2,200 RPM. But never allow the revs to climb into the red zone, or engine damage may occur. The best drivers keep their truck rolling. They anticipate traffic changes and compensate in advance. So you should always scan for upcoming traffic conditions. Because every time you have to bring the truck to a stop, means more fuel is used to get it moving again. Which means more wear and tear. Use the vehicle's momentum to coast up to intersections, roundabouts and traffic signals, particularly if they're red. Avoid harsh braking and harsh acceleration. Watch the traffic, anticipate changes, and keep an eye out for hazards. And don't accelerate to stop. Drive the truck the way it was designed to be driven, and it will be the best workmate you'll ever have. The bottom line is, if you're hard on the throttle, you're going to use fuel. So keep the revs down and stay in the green band. You'll soon see how much easier it is for you and the truck. How do you know if you're driving the truck in the most efficient way? Well, Scania driver support system lets you know. Scania is unique among truck manufacturers in providing a real-time digital support and advice feature for drivers that encourage efficient and safe driving whilst on the road. Scania driver support monitors your driving style up and down hills as well as braking and acceleration. And if you have a manual transmission, or you are using the manual override on the AMT, how and when you change gears. Take a look at these screens. This guy is doing moderately well, but he's got scope to be more efficient driver. He's got a good star score for anticipation when slowing down. 
In the second screen, the driver support system noted the driver did not lift off the accelerator before cresting the hill, so he's burning fuel unnecessarily. By using the Scania driver support system, you can improve your fuel economy, drive more safely, reduce wear and tear, get higher uptime and higher residual value. And at the end of each drive, you can see your average score. Many drivers quickly work out how to achieve a high score. And this in itself promotes efficient and safe driving habits. The score can be reset for each new journey. So if you do a regular run each day, you can even compare your driving effectiveness day by day. All Scania vehicles are fitted with anti-lock brakes, electronic brake systems, traction control, and most are fitted with our very powerful Scania Retarder. Now, the Scania Retarder has more stopping power than the engine produces torque, and therefore it's a more effective way of slowing the vehicle down without using your service brakes. The bulk of Scania trucks operating in Australia have EBS and disc brakes. There were some heavy haulage applications still use ABS and drum. The trucks fitted with disc brakes have electronic control, which means faster activation. But there's still a traditional air pressure backup as well. Now, let's talk Scania Retarder. The Scania Retarder makes driving safer, smoother and more comfortable. And it's located here, right next to the steering wheel. We've got six operating positions, off and one through to five, where five offers the most retardation and also activates the exhaust brake for maximum brake effect. You think of it as uh, zero to 100%, with each click being 20% more retardation. Now when you're off the throttle, and you want to slow the vehicle, you begin pulling the lever in an arc towards you and you'll feel the retarder engaging. On the underside of the lever there's a small button marked AUT or AUT and this is often overlooked or not understood but it's very useful. Think of it as a brake pedal control switch. When it's in position one the retarder is activated first and the driver taps the brake pedal and activates the downhill speed control. In position zero, the retarder braking only takes place with the lever. And just remember to move the lever back to off position after the brake has been completed and before you get back on the throttle. Now an important benefit of the Scania Retarder is that it allows you to safely increase your average speed in, a, in the downhill stretches compared with a vehicle without auxiliary brakes. But remember it's important to run the engine faster when the retarder is operating to ensure the system stays cool enough to work properly. It is always important to start off in the correct gear and not the cruise will automatically choose that for you. When driving up hills, restrict the number of gear changes you make because you lose pulling power and therefore speed with each change. And speed is valuable when driving up hills and the engine goes from 100% load to zero at the point of gear changing. So it's best to use the torque of the engine rather than the horsepower. The trick to driving most efficiently up and down hills is to back off the throttle before the crest so the vehicle inertia carries you over the top with no fuel used. This also reduces the amount of braking you may need going down the other side and stay at a predetermined speed or within the speed limit. If cruise control is activated all the way over the top of the hill, the driver support system registers as poor driving behaviour and a driving tips advice panel pops up advising that next time you should release the accelerator before the crest. So it's much more efficient to switch off the cruise control when ascending the hill. You will also burn less fuel because the truck is not trying to achieve set cruise speed. Lift off before the crest and let the vehicle momentum carry you over and down the other side. But remember to keep the momentum running to get you up the next hill as well. So your aim should be to anticipate everything that may happen on the road. And the cycle of traffic lights is an easy one to use and save fuel. 
Look ahead and anticipate when the lights may be changing to red or green and use that time to approach the intersection so you don't need to come to a standstill because setting off from a stop uses the most fuel. Allow the vehicle to decelerate naturally using the momentum if the lights are red. Use the retarder and then only at the last stage of slowing down apply the service brakes if the lights are still red. Getting this right takes practice but there are many opportunities in even one working day to get the process right. And by doing so, your efficiency score will go up quite quickly once you string a few good stops together.